What's going on guys? I hope you're all having a wonderful day today. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Ty and today in this video, I am in an excellent mood because my New York Knicks beat up on the 76ers last night led by no one else but my glorious king Jalen Brunson. But speaking of glorious kings, we're here to talk about Ryan Gosling and his brand new blockbuster action film, The Fall Guy. Now listen, I was honestly pretty excited going into this because, first of all, I love Ryan Gosling. Obviously, he's on such a hot streak right now between Barbie last year and obviously just like being popular in the media. You see him everywhere over social media. The marketing for this movie was wild. They're doing stunts on the red carpet. They're, you know, having funny interviews with Ryan Gosling. They're really leaning into this stunt thing that was awesome. So yeah, again, I was very excited. I mean, the only star that you could say is like hotter and more on fire than Ryan Gosling right now is probably Sydney Sweeney because she's in like everything, but he is literally on such a hot streak right now. So again, I was super excited for this. I love La La Land, one of my favorite movies, but I want to talk about whether this movie lived up to that hype or if it slightly disappointed me. Two quick things before we get into this review. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video to see my final verdict, my final rating, whatever you want to call it, of the Fall Guy. And on top of that, be sure to like and subscribe. It would really mean the world to me. We're on the road to a thousand subscribers. But listen, let's just get into talking about the Fall Guy. So just kind of getting into things here, just to start off with my overall thoughts. Did I end up loving this movie as much as I thought I would? Honestly, no, but it's still an extremely enjoyable film. It's just a bit of a mixed bag. There's a lot of things that I really liked. There's also some things that started to bother me as the movie sort of went on and on, and these problems weren't really getting fixed as the story progressed further and further, but... The one positive that I've got to say that really stands out here is our main stars. Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt are doing some heavy lifting. Obviously, Ryan Gosling, like I said, he's the main star, but Emily Blunt is just as good as him in this. Their chemistry in this, I was actually able to like believe it, and I kind of you know, bought into it. It was actually a good relationship that they sort of had, you know, forming here or whatever you want to say. Over the course of the story, as you start to see, you know, where things go, I was really invested in their love. Are they going to end up, you know, as a couple or not? Obviously, it's not like a spoiler that's in the trailers. It's a good film on that level. But from there, it feels like the plot is just duct taped together. And there's just a lot of elements in here that make this movie feel way too long. The runtime's a bit over two hours. I want to say two hours and six minutes, give or take. I think that this film could have easily been max an hour and 45 minutes. And that's not a big difference, but 20 minutes, that's the difference between this movie basically just feeling too long versus just the perfect length. But diving a little bit more into detail here, like I kind of stated already or referred to, this film literally feels like it's from the 90s and it was just plopped right in 2024, which I love because as everyone's saying, it's absolutely a love letter to stunts, to filmmaking, and it's cool to see a movie about making movies. Also, kind of a funny little thing, the movie that they're like making in here is basically just Dune, and I really like the play on that and how they kind of, it's almost like a spin-off parody of that. It's awesome, and like you kind of see, you know, the inner workings and all the little jokes that they try to drop in there. It's pretty cool. But again, it feels like a vessel for just big movie stars. But honestly, I'm not complaining because I feel like we're missing those big, stupid action movies that are like that, where it's not just plot focus. It's like, hey, let's get the biggest stars in the world and throw them in a fun, unique film. I feel like that's what a lot of movies in the 90s did, whether it's like something like Point Break with, you know, Keanu Reeves and Kurt Russell or Speed with Keanu Reeves. Like these are movies that were just had big stars at the helm doing a lot of heavy lifting, even a lot of Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, even Sylvester Stallone movies. It's the same idea, like a Rambo or a Predator. That's what this feels like. Speaking of the stunts, obviously, because, you know, that's like the big kind of 90s element here. I feel like, and this is just going to sound kind of funny, and it's kind of unfair to me to like criticize this. A lot of these stunt sequences and like the action sequences look fake and they look CGI. But then I got to the credits and they show you all the stunts that they were doing. And I think that they just looked so good and that they were so real that I just thought they were CGI. So most of these sequences where there's like these crazy flips, ca like cars just doing insane jumps, Ryan Gosling, this was seen in the trailer, he's like holding on to like this car, kind of like surfing behind it on like a bridge on like this metal plate, but it ended up being real. But while I was watching the movie, I thought it was CGI. So when they showed it in the credits, I gained a lot more respect for this movie and for what I've just seen. The stunts in this are awesome. Pretty much everything you've seen, and I want to say this so that when you go into the movie, you'll know, 
is real because I literally, it was just so mind blowing that I actually thought it was CGI. Moving on from there though, kind of getting into the plot thing, this is the biggest issue for me because this is the thing. Like I said, the movie's too long. The reason for that, besides the plot, which we'll get into in a second, is that I feel like every single conversation that characters have between one another is just too long. Let's just say that there's a two minute conversation between characters. For some reason, it ends up being like four minutes. On top of that, there were some conversations where like they just drag on. But as a whole, all I could think about is if we just cut this conversation out of the movie, literally nothing would change about the plot, about character relationships, nothing. Like there's these sequences where Ryan Gosling's on the phone with Emily Blunt and it's like a three minute, it almost just feels like they're riffing off of each other and kind of just like rambling to each other. It's not really too funny. It tries to be a little bit meta maybe about like the whole movie making process. But honestly, all it feels like it's doing is adding to the runtime because we've spent time before this conversation. And this just happens multiple times for all these conversations. We've spent time developing these characters. So we don't need another like kind of pointless conversation to where I'm kind of just sitting there and I'm like, OK, can we get on to the next thing? Speaking of kind of pointless things, obviously, movies are a journey. Their plot starts in one place and it's like, you know, you could picture someone walking on a path to the final destination. That's going to be, you know, the ending, the third act, whatever. It feels like this movie takes two acts to kind of find the direction it's actually trying to go. Then the third act, it's like, oh, that's what this movie's about. That sounds kind of crazy, but I feel like for the first two acts, we're kind of just wandering around like doing nothing like like i said the person walking on a path like how any other story typically goes it feels like the person's walking on this path then you know they see a butterfly and they're like oh look at this cute little butterfly then they're like admire admiring the sky they're forgetting that they're on a journey and that they're supposed to be moving forward but instead they're just like neandering around like looking at the sky they're rolling around in the grass nothing's really moving forward if that makes sense like it's paced poorly it's at certain points i was just like okay can this story progress can we have an moderately important plot point like occur in the film you know what i mean like it just felt like we're doing nothing like i said and obviously referring to the plot which i've already said i don't think the plot is amazing and it's unfortunate because i feel like it actually does get good in the third act or at least the first half of the third act i know it sounds like this movie isn't good by the way that i'm saying it but i really did enjoy it it's very fun it's funny we'll get to that in a second but i feel like the best part of this movie is like the first half of the third act like i already said it's awesome because then everything kind of falls into place and you're like oh okay this actually kind of makes sense now whereas for two acts you're kind of like wait what's going on sort of it's like a little bit confusing there's random characters kind of bouncing in and out it's a little bit weird on that end but regardless, it's just fun to see Ryan Gosling being Ryan Gosling because he is in like 95% of this movie. There is barely any shots without him in it. And I love that. All the stunts, like I said, look awesome. There's really cool action. There's good music. There's good emotional moments. I was actually really invested, like I said, in the relationship between Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt. Emily Blunt, I've really got to give her her flowers. She was very funny in this. She was badass in this. She had like her own moments that were really awesome. And overall, I really did have a good time with this film. There's a lot of very funny moments. I'm going to be honest, like some of the jokes kind of like fell flat, but there's two to three times where out loud, I actually was laughing and I couldn't even contain my laughter because it was great. Like, I'm like, I don't want to spoil them, obviously, but there's some hilarious jokes. There's also one joke at the end with, you know, maybe a, a cameo that is so funny. It's hysterical. I was literally dying in the theater. But listen, at the end of the day, is the Fall Guy a masterpiece? No, not by any means. But the fact that David Leach, who obviously is a stuntman already, was able to come in here, make yet another fun blockbuster I think it's an enjoyable movie. This is a great film to watch with like your dad or I'd even say like with your family. And it's one of these movies where maybe in a couple of years, if it's like on HBO Max or whatever, Netflix, maybe I'll just throw it on just to watch it. It's a fun time at the movies. I honestly want more movies like this. I know that this isn't a 10 out of 10 film, but regardless, these are just these fun, creative movies where I feel like we don't have vessels for movie stars anymore, where this movie feels like, hey, we have Ryan Gosling, an action star. He's in his prime. He's doing stunts. He has a love you know, thing going on here. It's awesome. Things are blowing up. There's guns shooting everywhere. 
You don't need to think about it too much. I really like that. Aaron Taylor Johnson's in here as well. He's very funny and with the limited screen time that he gets. He's really awesome in this. There's also a couple of other side characters that honestly I couldn't really care less about. But regardless, this is a really awesome movie. When it hits, it hits a home run, but sometimes it swings and it misses. Regardless, I really enjoyed The Fall Guy. So my final verdict on this film, what am I going to settle with? I think that my score for this movie is going to end up being a three and a half out of five. I thought that it was super fun. It's charming. It's a different type of movie that I wish we'd get more of. And yeah, sure, it's messy. I get that. But I love seeing big movie stars be big movie stars and get, you know, to kind of riff off of each other, to have fun, epic moments with stunts. It's awesome. This movie feels like it was actually cared about when, you know, they made it. David Leach did a great job directing it. And overall, again, it's just an enjoyable summer blockbuster. I would recommend it. Great family movie. And yeah, Ryan Gosling, dude, he's literally me. Guys, thank you for watching this video. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video.